Hello everyone, today I'll tell you a bit about the HDF5 data format. So remember from last tutorial we did our simulation of beam attenuation and the data we stored in uh, some type of ASCII file as shown here where you have two columns of uh, double precision data. There are several problems with this. Performance portability and file size. So if you look at these columns, let's say you want to read it, this in, there's a certain number of spaces here, um, there's a certain number of decimal places, but if we go to the top of the file, the number of spaces is different, it's in scientific notation. This could be a mess if you're trying to give this to a friend of yours. Everyone writes their ASCII files in some slightly different format, and you're just telling him, okay, deal with it. Here's the data. Uh, also, if we have 20 columns, which column is which? It's, it's really, it can be really time consuming and confusing to read these kind of um, files. Secondly, if you look at the number of columns, you can see at the bottom right, there's 52 characters plus a new line character, 1,023 lines. So um, times, well, one byte per character. That is 54 kilobytes. Let's see, ah, this exactly matches the file size. So this is w without any compression. An alternative to writing the, these ASCII files is to use some kind of library like NetCDF or HDF5. This will guarantee that whoever gets your file on the planet, they will be able to read it if they have the same uh, version of the library. And today we'll look at HDF5. Um, this will improve the performance of reading and writing. The file size will be smaller and um, it is portable. So instead of writing these columns of characters, it's basically two doubles. Why don't you just write the doubles themselves? Um, that's what HDF5 uh, does. And it's basically 1023 uh, 23 columns times two doubles and a double is eight bytes per double so that's significantly smaller all times uh, almost four times as small and secondly there's no need to convert between doubles and characters um right let's first install the library so for this at least on ubuntu 20 this is the platform i am on you can just install it like this uh, lib hdf5 dev several additional binaries appear so h5 cc c++ these are the c and c compiler wrappers so they will automatically include and link the right uh, paths for the compilation to work so that's actually pretty neat um, and similarly there's h5fc for fortran um, there's also h5 dump to to dump all the contents of a hdf5 file to the console so watch out if you're dealing with gigabyte files because it will completely swamp uh, the console h5 diff is comparing two HD5 files for difference as well, and so on and so on. There are many of these binaries provided. However, we were already using MPI Fort, which was another wrapper. So we will need to include these, these libraries uh, manually. First, we can see uh, where is actually this thing installed? So it's installed in several places and I did some um, some experimenting before recording this. Actually, it's also 
shipped with Anaconda, which causes some trouble if you use this path. Um, so anyway, let's use the first one. It's basically a bash script um, that calls G Fortran plus sets up a whole bunch of um, variables and whatnot. You can read it yourself. Um, also, and this we will need, it gives here the lib dev tier and include tier. Okay, let's now modify the make file. And as I said, what we will need are this lib dev tier and include tier. Then to include it at the compilation stage, we will have to specify dash capital I. And then the value of include basically. For the linking stage, we will add a dash L and then dollar lib. Okay, additionally, we need to specify which libraries from this path we will import. And that is LHDF5 and LHDF5 Fortran. Now, if you go to this path, there will not be, these files will not be there, but the convention is, I don't know why, that you replace lib by L. So I will show you now. Um, ls slash so these are the available libraries and this one we want and this one we want and as you can see the lib has been replaced by dash l the a stands for archive by the way this contains already pre-compiled uh, routines and then in the include path there is a module file now let's uh, modify the code so here we have write data i will replace that by write hdf5 and i will give in a file name as argument data.h5 then in particle routines I will create this new routine Of course, we also need to use HDF5 in order to be able to access these, uh, these subroutines. Then we need to integers some error variable and um, the rank of the data space. I'll explain later on. We need to specify the dimensions of the data. I'm going to store the same data, which is just a one dimensional array. So instead of kind, I'm using h size t because I believe this is an integer uh, kind eight. Uh, but anyway, I'll let the library handle that for me. And those are the data dims. That's an array containing the the lengths of each array dimension, but there's only one dimension. So it is an array with only one element. Then we will need some IDs. So a file ID, a data space ID. 
a data set ID, actually two of them, because there are two data sets. Now what we will do is open the HDF5 Fortran interface. So h5 open underscore f error. So at the end of each of these routines, you pass the variable error. So if one of these calls fails, then from that you can extract what the error code was. For now, I won't really use this error variable. You could if you want, but to keep it short and simple, I'll just ignore whatever the uh, value of error is. So we open the interface and also we must have a corresponding closure of the interface. So h5 close f error. Then within this uh, section here, we will open the file. So call h5 f uh, open f. And to that we pass the file name. Um, then the mode of uh, opening, which is h5f arc trunk truncation mode, meaning if the file exists, we override it. Then the file ID and the error. This must have a corresponding closure of the file. So h5f close f the file ID followed by the error. Now, these routine names might look arcane at first, but trust me, there's a pattern in this. So first you have H5, they all start with that. Then F for file, D for dataset, S for space, etc. Then the action, which is open or close or something else and then underscore f because it's uh, the Fortran interface. Now the space rank is the number of dimensions in the data space, which is just one. Um, and then data dims, the dimensions, are basically grid, uh, grid resolution minus one. Now we can open the data space, call h5s create simple f the rank, then the dimensions of the data, and then the data space ID. There could be multiple data spaces for different uh, data types or whatever and we also are going to close that so h5s close f then the data space id and the error now three levels deep we're getting closer we can now create the data set itself so we call h5d create f, which we will provide with the file ID. Then um, the name of the variable, which is x for the x position. Um, the data type, this is the double precision data type. Um, data space ID. Then the data set ID belonging to this data, well, data set. And we're just going to do that again. But now for the ion line density, um, data, set, data set ID 2. Now, after creating this data set, you might imagine we have to uh, close the data set. So call h5d close f. Okay, and now at the deepest level we can actually write the data set. So call um, 
h5t right f data set id then the average position which is x grid um, one up to the grid resolution minus one then the dimensions of the data and of course ending with an error and the second array Uh, which is ion line density, same dimensions, and the error variable. All right, that should do it. First, make file. It's, um Let me start with debug mode first. Compile, fine, it seems to run just fine. MPI run. Right, okay, so this should have been H5 F create file create F. All right, and we might as well enable optimization. Okay, as you can see now, a new file has been created, data.h5, which is significantly smaller than data.txt. Um, <clears throat> with h5 dump, we can see if it has been written correctly, it just writes all of the stuff to the console. But this is not very need to browse if it's gigabytes in file size so for that we can use hc5 uh, view or i quite like hc5 compass as well Right, here you can actually browse the data, you can see what's inside, and you can even uh, make a simple plot of the data. This doesn't seem to work for some reason. Um, but we can also do something else. We can launch Spider. And for this you could import it with the import data tool. Note, not all versions support uh, importing of HCF5 files, but on my other PC it uh, did support that. I don't see it available here though. So what we can do is we import H5Py. Now you can see what is inside with keys. So I line density in X, which is as expected. And we can get the actual data out with data file X. Now you may wonder, okay, where is my data? But what it does is it only creates some kind of hyperlink to the data. It doesn't actually read the data just yet. Um, this is actually quite useful if you have very large data files because that may completely overflow your memory. So you may want to specify a certain range of the data before it's actually read. Now, for this example, I'll just read everything. So with just a colon, if you want a subset, let's say 10 to 20, you can specify it like that. But I want all the data. Now you can see array of float 64 bit double precision and we can just browse 
uh, browse the data here. And similarly, we can um, get the ion line density. And we might as well uh, plot it while we're at it. And this is the plot from the last video. Um, but the big difference now is that this data is actually portable. You can give it to anyone in the world and they will be able to open it with the same version of HDF5.